We all know Fred Couples. He's the charismatic golfer with the swing that flies but never tries. But how much do you know about his journey to greatness? Today, we'll uncover the inspirational story of this golf legend. We'll take you on a ride through his humble beginnings, his rise to fame, his greatest challenges, and what makes him a special golf icon. As we go along, we invite you to share your thoughts on Fred's illustrious career in the comments. For our first stop, we'll visit Beacon Hill in Seattle, Washington, where a young couples took his very first swing. Stick around for the incredible hurdles he's had to overcome in the course of his career. The story of Fred Couples is not your normal golf story. Golf, for mostly financial reasons, has been an elitist sport for centuries. So how did Couples literally go from grass to grace? Let's find out. The Couples family lived a simple life in Beacon Hill, where Fred, his dad Tom, his mom Violet, his brother Tom Jr., and his sister Cindy shared a small white rambler. It was all Tom Sr. could provide for his family with paychecks from groundskeeping for the Seattle Department of Parks and Recreation. Fred was born in 1959, when his family was still finding its feet on relatively new American soil. In their part of Seattle, they lived among other immigrants, and Fred himself was a third-generation Italian-American with a Croatian-American mother. And because their original name Coppola sounded quite native, his grandpa had changed it to Couples when he moved to the United States. Since the Couples family wasn't a golfing family, it took a mixture of proximity and fascination for Couples to develop his skills. You could say his meeting with golf was written in the stars above Seattle, because the Jefferson Park golf course was only a few blocks from his home. But looking at Fred's plaque at the course's entrance, you wouldn't know what he had to do to get it. His parents could hardly afford his golf involvement, so to play for free, Fred would sneak into the course through someone's yard. But he later stopped doing that after the course employed him to pick balls on the driving range. Till today, many don't even know that Fred's decision to golf without gloves wasn't a style choice. He only started playing gloveless because his daily $5 golf stipends couldn't afford the $8 gloves he kept destroying from playing every day. His money issues also meant he couldn't afford golf lessons, so he never had them, making his impeccable swing all the more unbelievable. Couples was that genius who didn't even know what he was doing, but the result was magic. All he wanted to do was hit the ball farther than the bigger boys at Jefferson, but instead he became a beautiful bomber. In fact, by the time he was on his way to college, the course had stopped him from using his driver on the range. They were afraid he would hit someone at the basketball court at the Jefferson Community Center 300 yards away. This effortless range off the tee would later give him the nickname Boom Boom. Now we'll explore how Fred went from Seattle's rising star to golf superstar. And later, we'll show you the dark side of Fred's lucky life that his smile makes us forget. In his senior year at O'Day High School, Couples had won the state high school championship by 14 strokes. He was a local star in Seattle, but after he graduated from O'Day in 1977, no college was willing to take a chance on him. He had to wait until the University of Houston came knocking with a partial scholarship offer. That year, he joined the Houston Cougars men's golf team, and through golf, he met roommates, future PGA Tour pro Blaine McAllister and golf broadcaster and commentator Jim Nance. At the university, he would win the individual title in his first year and lead the Cougars to two Southwest Conference team championships. Besides these, he played in three NCAA championships and had a best finish of T18 before turning pro in 1980. When he arrived on the PGA Tour in 1981, Couples had an unmissable star quality about him. It was something in the air around him. He was the pro golfer with the most laid-back gait anyone had ever seen. He was from the rare breed of golfers who played without gloves. He spoke with the honesty of a child. Plus, it helped that he looked like a fashion model among his colleagues. He seemed to have it all. But above all, his flawless swing was the most eye-catching bit about him. And this was how Jim Nance, who saw it up close, described it. The reaction of the ball coming off the club doesn't fit with the way he strikes the ball. His swing is beguiling. What your eyes are seeing is not what's happening. It just doesn't fit. 
Golf instructor Jim McLean took a more scientific approach. He measured the left hip extension of over 200 golfers, and by his calculations, Couples and John Daly extended their left hip more than all of their peers. It was what made Couples Boom Boom and Daly Long John. While his smooth swing and easygoing golf drew the men, his good looks and gentle mannerisms pulled the women. And in a short time, he had a full gallery cheering him wherever he went. Couples was only two years into his PGA Tour career when he held off four players in a sudden death playoff to win the Kemper Open. This didn't open a floodgate of victories for Couples, but his wins trickled in slowly. His 1984 Players' Championship win was followed by a Byron Nelson in 1987 and a Nissan Los Angeles Open in 1990. With two wins for the first time in 1991, Couples was named the PGA Tour Player of the Year. His performance during this period was what his fans had waited for, and he repaid their faith in him the next year. In the five weeks before the 1992 Masters, Couples made sure he was everyone's favorite to win at Augusta. He won two of five tournaments, including a Nissan Los Angeles Open against Davis Love III, and finished second in another two. At Augusta, 49-year-old Raymond Floyd almost made history when he overtook Couples in the final round. But Couples would shake off the scare with eight pars and a birdie on the back nine to claim his first and only major tournament victory. Pleasure. Well done, Fred. Thanks. Welcome Mr. to the club. <laughs> Let's right. get it on and see the fits. <laughs> and finally, he and Jim Nance got to live out the victory interview they'd practiced during their college days. With one of the best season starts in PGA Tour history, Couples led the money list with over $1.3 million and won Player of the Year award for the second year in a row. He also made history as the first American golfer to reach number one on the official world golf rankings since its inception in 1986. He would spend 16 weeks at the top of the rankings, but for reasons you'll know soon, 1992 became a flash in the pan for Couples. After his green jacket, he won six more times on the PGA Tour, including the 1996 Players' Championship. Winning became so scarce for Couples that when he won his last tournament in 2003, he was in tears as he thanked his wife Thais and coach Butch Harmon. Been, been Butch Harmon? <laughs> you're, you're entitled, Fred. However, off the PGA Tour, Couples was an even more sensational performer. He was on the U.S. teams for all five Ryder Cups from 89 to 97, winning in 91 and 93. He was called the king of the silly season for his utter dominance in off-season events. For example, his pairing with Davis Love III won the World Cup of Golf for four years straight from 92 to 95. Also, no player won skins like the man once called Mr. Skins. Couples won the skins game five times, and in 11 appearances, he pocketed $4.4 million from winning 77 skins. But within every glory story, there's an unforgettable world of pain and perseverance. On and off the course, Fred experienced tragedies that could have broken many men, but he stayed strong. When Couples married Suzanne Hanneman in 2022, it was his third time saying, I do. For a man envied for his luck in life, Couples didn't have a lot of luck in marriage. As a result, he has been married three times to three different women. First, to Deborah Couples, whom he met at the University of Houston in 1979 and married in 1981. In the beginning, Deborah, an extroverted teaching tennis pro, had seemed like the perfect match for the introverted couples. But about 12 years after their marriage, they decided to part ways. In 1998, five years after his divorce from Deborah, Couples married again, this time to Thais Baker, an art dealer from Los Angeles whom he met at the Nissan Open at Riviera. But a few weeks after they met, Baker was diagnosed with breast cancer. The cancer, which went into remission and returned, created a turbulent atmosphere within their love life. On top of that, Fred's on-the-road lifestyle made it harder for them to stay together. He was still dealing with Baker's ill health when he got the news that Deborah, his former wife, had taken her own life in 2001. In 2009, Couples, who was by then estranged from Baker, lost her, too, to cancer. 
Fred's history with cancer could have added to the difficulty of dealing with his wife's ailment. Before he met Baker, he'd lost two of his favorite people in the world to cancer. It had taken his mom away on a morbid Mother's Day in 1994 after her battle with breast cancer. Then, in 1997, his father, who had taught couples so much about life, also passed away from leukemia. On the course, life wasn't any easier for couples. A 1994 back injury at the Doral Ryder Open made sure of that. He was hitting warm-up shots on the range when he hit an 8-iron, and in his words, it felt like my back exploded. I stood there and absolutely could not move. I've never had anything that felt like that. That explosion very much crumbled Fred's career. It started by badly disrupting his 1995 season. Afterward, it ended any momentum couples had been building and would go on to plague him for the rest of his life. Because of the herniated disc in his back, couples could only play six rounds of professional golf in 2007. Still, none of these had much to do with what many consider Fred's underachievement. At the heart of it was Fred's carefree attitude toward his golf. There was never a point when he wanted to be the best golfer in the world. During his time off competition, Couples wasn't known to pick up a club to work on his game. He didn't have it in him to grind as most players did, but his talent was always enough when he went back into action. According to a family friend, Tony Porcello, Fred is like his dad, who was a great baseball player and the nicest person, but neither one of them ever went all out, never thought of anything as life and death. Fred's father had learned to live a modest life from his own father, who worked at the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. Naturally, he had passed the lessons to his son, whose talent took him where no couples had ever been. Couples accumulated a net worth of over $100 million from his golf career and business, but he remained a gardener from Seattle at his core. And if there was anything couples didn't enjoy about being a star, it was the paparazzi. He was a shy man who said more when he had nothing to say and asked little of life. Blessed with more talent than most, one can only wonder what could have happened if couples had had more push or pursued his career with more enthusiasm. But there's no need to worry because Couples himself is unbothered. Golf to him has always been just a game, and he's given it all he can. If you are enjoying the video so far, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and turn on notifications to get more content like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts about Fred's story in the comments. In golf's history books, the name Fred Couples is written in gold. He changed the game forever, and here's why we'll never forget him. Couples joined other legends on the Champions Tour in 2010 and has been one of the top players on the circuit. He won the Rookie of the Year with four wins in his first year, and won the Senior Open Championship, his only senior major, in 2012. In addition to his on-course heroics, Couples has laid the foundation for future champions with his contributions to golf course design. Since 1992, he has designed over 20 golf courses with his business partner Gene Bates. His famous career has also been immortalized in several Halls of Fame. Among them are his inductions into the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame in 2007, the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2013, and the Croatian American Sports Hall of Fame in October 2022. Fred Couples will be remembered for one of golf's greatest par saves, his hole-in-one on his third shot at TPC Sawgrass's treacherous par 317 will never be forgotten. The weekend cut. Same club, that's a 9-iron again. No! <laughs> He'll be remembered for making the most consecutive cuts at the Masters. His record of 23 consecutive cuts is only matched by Gary Player and Tiger Woods. And as the oldest player to make the cut at age 63, it's safe to say that Augusta will never forget Fred. He'll also be remembered for captaining the U.S. President's Cup team to victory in 2009. We'd love to tell you what we think Fred Couples would be most remembered for, but we'll let Gary McCord, the commentator who named him Boom Boom, do the honors. McCord once said this about the legacy of Fred Couples. Fred is the first real golf zen master. It's how he plays, how he moves, how he talks. As great a player as he's been, I think his legacy will be more as a persona. If you enjoyed this video about Fred Couples, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too.
Also, let us know in the comments if there's another golfer whose journey you'd like us to cover. See you there!